In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take Go code and have it bundled up and zipped using AWS CDK to then deploy it to a serverless AWS Lambda function, all in this video. You see, companies like Vercel and SST recently have really made serverless all the rage. I mean, everyone has heard of serverless and well, rest in peace servers. That's how it works, right? Servers are dead because it's serverless, right? If you've been following along on the channel, you know we really like Go. We really like Go. It's it's such a good language. But one thing that makes it really great is the simplicity of how to use it in serverless functions like AWS Lambda. And AWS is the biggest market share for cloud providers, so might as well use it because so many big companies use AWS. Go code. AWS, put it together, serverless function in one video. Let's just get straight into the code. All right, so you can see here, I have an empty directory. The first thing we're gonna do is CDK initialize a TypeScript project. And if you've never used CDK, well, think of it as infrastructure as code. And if you are interested in more about this, let me know in the comment section below and I can describe what CDK is or what is infrastructure as code as a whole. All right, now once that is done, go ahead and boot up your favorite IDE. I use VS Code, again, sorry Prime, sorry Tej, form a Neo Vim user here. And you can explore this new directory that you have. And you can see here under lib, we have this new TS file called AWS Lambda Go Stack. And as this comment says, the code that defines your stack goes here. And what they mean is if you have a bucket that you're going to use, you can define it here. But in our case, this section is we're going to be defining our Lambda, our gateway, and our permissions and roles to deploy our Go code to the Lambda and then to the cloud. So the first thing you want to do is actually make a new directory called lambdas and then cd into that directory. And then we're going to make a new file called our main dot go file and next we're going to do a go mod in it you can call it anything you want i'm going to call it aws lambda go and then go mod tidy so now we have our go mod file and our main.go file now like i said earlier this is going to be entirely a video about lambda so the first thing we need to actually get is go get the lambda package from aws that allows us to pull in types and different functionalities and method calls that makes it easier for us to define our code to play nicely with AWS Lambda. So there you can see added it and you can double check that by going into our directory, go mod and you can see here we have our package, perfect. Okay, now that you define your package main, go ahead and put an app struct and this is gonna have just one field called ID. Now this part isn't necessary, you don't need to have an app struct. I personally like to have it because it just makes handling the method calls on my main.go and my handler a lot easier to do, especially if you can add more functionality down the road. All right, so now let's define a new function called new app, which is going to take an ID of string. It's going to return an app. I'm going to do return, pass it a pointer reference to app, open this up and do ID is going to be ID. Perfect. All right, next, I quickly define all the imports that we're going to need, which is the built-in HTTP stand library, strings, including JSON, and then that new AWS Lambda Go package, which we installed previously in our go.mod file. All right, so I'm gonna skip a little bit ahead and actually create a func main. And here is where we're gonna start our actual Lambda handler. But first, we need to declare an ID. So I'm gonna do ID equals some random string. And then we're gonna put app, is going to be new app pass an ID. Now it's going to complain that's not used, which is fine. And then here we're going to do lambda, lambda dash start. And this is where we're going to pass in the actual handler. So here I'm going to define func app the app. And I'm going to do handler. And it's going to take nothing. And it's going to return an error for now return nil and here we're going to populate it with app dot handler cool so this is a very bare bone implementation now let's actually modify our handler function okay so the first thing that i want to modify is actually the event so it's going to be events dot api gateway proxy request and then our return is no longer just going to be an error but it's going to be events dot api gateway proxy response and an error like so all right let's first create our response body which is going to be a map 
that's going to take string string and now we're going to use the built-in standard json library that go has to offer so we're going to do response json and our error we're going to do uh json.marshall pass in response body and if error does not equal to nil we're going to handle this and we have to return uh from this so we're going to do return events dot api gateway Crocs response, open it up. We're going to put our status code as HTTP status internal server error. We're going to put our headers as a map of string, string content type application slash JSON, and then the body error internal server error the comma there and then here put no perfect so we handled that error now what we're gonna do response is going to be basically the exact same thing events dot api gateway proxy response we're gonna open that up we're gonna put the body as strings response json our status code is going to be http status okay all right, and now we're going to pass our happy path. We're going to define response, and that's going to be, again, the events.api gateway proxy response. We're going to open it up, and we're going to do body. It's going to be string response JSON. We're going to do status code as HTTP status OK. Our headers are going to be the exact same with a bit of a difference here. So I pasted a bunch of these headers because I didn't want to type them out all one by one. But essentially, these are what's needed for the most dreaded thing of all, cores. Now, we're going to get into cores when we define our gateway. But remember, this is just necessary for handling and not getting an issue when you deploy this. And then you have like a React front end trying to curl it or trying to fetch it. And you get that dreaded cores error message. I, I hate it. I've been pulling my hair out for that. Like, trust me add these into your header type. And remember, if you're gonna do anything production, make sure you clamp this access control allow origin. Right now it's wildcard, so anything could be allowed. But when you run something in production, make sure you control who can access your API. All right, so now we're gonna switch gears into the actual CDK code of our application. Because believe it or not, the actual Go code is already done. Pretty easy, but you can expand on it. The point is that you can get something running pretty fast and deploy and then, you can craft it however you want, make it as complicated as you really want it to be. All right, so in that stock AWS Lambda Go stack.ts file, I removed the comments and I've also added two new imports. The first import is the Lambda import from the CDK library, and the second import is the REST API and Lambda integration constructs from the AWS Gateway library, also part of the CDK library. We need the gateway to be a layer on top between all incoming calls into our Lambda. And then we need to actually define our Lambda function and point it to where it can get the main.go code from our Lambda's directory. All right, so let's go ahead and define our const my function. That's gonna be a new lambda.function. And we're gonna put, pass it in this, my Lambda, open this up, and we're gonna pass it a few parameters here. So the first one is code, and this is going to be where the Lambda is going to bundle our Go code. So we're going to put Lambda dot code dot from asset, and this is going to take a string, and this string is going to be the name of the root folder of where our main.go file is. So remember, I create my root folder as Lambdas, and that has my main.go file. So I'm going to do the same here. Next, we're going to need our handler, and this is going to be the, main, the name of the folder, so it's going to be called main. And then it needs one more argument, which is the runtime. And this is going to tell us, well, what kind of code is? Is it Python code, Node code, or Go code? So you can do Lambda, runtime, and then put Go 1.x, because that's the version of Go we have. And there you go. You have declared a Lambda function, but it's not doing anything just yet. The next thing that we're going to do is actually build our API gateway, which again is a layer between all coming client calls and our Lambda function. But also remember, we need to make sure that it allows cores just in case you want to actually call this using like React or something on your local machine or even a deployed machine. So here we're going to do const gateway is new rest API. 
I'm gonna call it this, call it my gateway, and following the same pattern, it's gonna take a few arguments that are needed. So the main one is this default course pre-flight options. And this is absolutely critical. I'm gonna put allow origins, and that's gonna take an array, and then allow methods is gonna be the same thing. It's going to be a list, and it's gonna take get, post, options. Just, just throw them all down, delete, and put. There you go, now we have our gateway. And you may be thinking, oh, well, well, that's easy. I have my function, my gateway, I'm happy. Wrong, because you need to tell your gateway what route will the code that you just wrote in your main.go file actually run on. So the next thing we need to do is actually bind our API to our Lambda and then define the route for the functionality. All right, so next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do const in integration is going to be new a Lambda integration. I'm going to pass it in my Lambda function that you have on line 13. Next, we're going to do the name of your handler. So we named our handler. It's going to be a test line. So you can do test resource gateway dot root dot add resource. And then this is going to be the path of where people can curl your particular main.go file. And I'm just gonna put test here, meaning that once we deploy this, we will get back our gateway URL. And at the end of that, we can append slash test. And that is going to hit the particular Lambda function that we defined up here. And well, to get more specific, the main.go file that we defined with the current single handler. And this is where you can define multiple different routes and you can split up as multiple different lambdas handling different routes or one giant lambda that can differentiate between routes. That's an architectural decision that you can decide. And let me know which one you decide in the comment section below. Cool. And then the last thing we need to do is test resource dot add method. We need to tell it what kind of method can we expect this. So this is going to be a simple get and I'm going to pass it in our integration. Perfect. And there you go. Now we have a CDK stack that's going to deploy our Lambda function and it's going to deploy a API gateway and bind it all together. Now there's one thing that we forgot to mention. So you can see here under my Lambda's directory, I have a go mod, a go.sum and a main.go, but that's really not gonna work because you need to actually build your main.go file into a binary and that is what is going to be zipped from our function into our Lambda. And now you can see we have our main binary file. All that's left to do is you have your CDK code, you have your Go code. The next thing you wanna do is deploy it. So hit it with the CDK deploy and watch the magic. You can see here, so you know, this may be secret related. We're gonna click yes, always put yes, always put that Y, never put N, come on. Don't check, don't validate, just send it. Perfect, so you can see here, we've had a few things deployed and you can see this address. So this is the actual address for our gateway, but let's hop into the AWS console and see really what we just deployed. Okay, so now under AWS, under CloudFormation, you can see our AWS Lambda Go stack. Oh, it's so pretty. You can click it, you can see all the resources and events that were created. You can have a Lambda, our gateway, all the CDK metadata. So everything's working, you can actually check it out into Lambda, so you can go hop into Lambda, go here, and there it is. Eight of us, Lambda, go stack my Lambda using runtime, go, zipped, last modified three minutes ago. But can we curl it? Does it work? All right, so back in the terminal, you can see here, we're gonna do a curl, a get request to the address of our API gateway. Now, if you somehow lost it, don't worry. You can get this address back on the AWS console, go under API gateways, and you'll find it there. But one thing I wanna just make sure you guys all understand is this is where we define our get method and where we define the path, this test path here. And if we actually hop into our main.go file, what we can expect to get is a response that says, hi, you have hit this route if everything works accordingly. So go back, let's hit this curl. You literally went from zero to writing your first main.go file, which is going to be handler for all your API functionality, to then using it and deploying it to the AWS cloud into a production ready environment. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I know this may have been a bit of a longer tutorial, but there's a lot of aspects here that I wanted to break down. And I know it was fairly simple, but honestly, this shows you the fundamentals that you need to really get your feet 
in the deep end and start running with some really cool stuff. AWS is not going away. And I'm more than confident to say whenever you land a job or you change jobs or even at your current job, you're probably using some sort of cloud provider. And I'll even double down and say the majority of the cases, it's going to be AWS. And if you're interested in using Go, but you want to do something that actually tests your knowledge and actually make an application, then creating Go code, bundling it up and deploying it to AWS that's one of the best things you can add to your resume right now, in my humble opinion. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to comment, like, click, and subscribe. We're on our road to 10,000 YouTube subscribers. It's going to be a fun one. I can't wait for it to happen, but I need to leave you guys off with two things. So first thing is, do you use AWS? And did you like this video? Did you find it helpful? Did you like this tutorial? Do you like these kinds of videos? I gotta know. I'm hungry to know. And Second thing, you guys already know, right? You know. You gotta power it.